Fair warning, spoilers ahead if you have not seen Rocky IV. You have been warned. What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Rocky reviews, in today's video I'll be taking a look at the fourth installment of this iconic franchise with Rocky IV. Rocky IV was released in 1985, and for the third sequel in a row, this film was once again directed by Sylvester Stallone. This movie was one of the highest grossing Rocky films of its era, and for a while this was the highest grossing sports film of all time, until it was outgrossed in 2009 by a movie called The Blind Side. Rocky IV was met with mixed reviews, with many criticizing the writing, the ridiculousness of the plot, but still praising the fight sequences and everything that you expect within the Rocky franchise. So this is one of the more divisive Rocky films, but it's also one of the fan favorite Rocky films at the same time. This is a beloved Rocky film by a lot of Rocky fans. Who, especially ones who grew up in the 80s with these Rocky films. So what do I think of Rocky IV? Is it one of the worst Rocky films? Is it one of the best Rocky films? Or is it in between? Let's find out together. After Iron Man Drago, a highly intimidating 6 foot 5, 261 pound Soviet athlete, kills Apollo Creed in an exhibition match, Rocky comes to the heart of Russia for 15 pile-driving boxing rounds of revenge. And this movie stars Sylvester Stallone, Talia Shire, Carl Weathers, Dolph Lundgren, Bridget Nelson, and Burt Young. When Rocky went into the 80s, the franchise definitely went in a goofier direction. We saw that with Rocky III, with the inclusions of both Mr. T and Hulk Hogan in the movie. Rocky IV takes it one step further. Rocky IV embraces its Cold War setting, having the competition literally be a, box, a boxing match between the USA and the USSR, and you have conflicts between the two boxers because of it being competition between two competing countries and superpowers. You got a lot of machismo cheese sprinkled throughout the film. You have... <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard talking about this movie with a straight face. You got Polly hooking up with an 80s robot. You got Apollo Creed when he does his exhibition match with Drago pumping the crowd up with James Brown coming out of nowhere with showgirls hyping the crowd up before the match. <laughs> it just comes right out of nowhere and it's one of the standout amazing scenes of the entire film. And then there's like three different montages throughout the film. Two of them I'd say are necessary. One is completely useless. It does not make sense. It's Rocky driving his car and he's montaging through his past life and it goes on for way too long. And the song doesn't even match the scene and it's just so weird. The other montages are so cheesy and over the top. Like you have Dolph Lundgren on steroids doing crazy workouts and running up steep treadmill inclines and on the flip side, you got Rocky running up mountains going, Drago! Oh, and did I mention that Rocky essentially ended the Cold War? Yeah, like, he wins the round, he wins the fight at the end in Russia, and he's like, If I can change, you can change, everybody can change! And everybody's like clapping up and even like the Soviet government just like <gasps> moved to tears by Rocky. <laughs> it's safe to say this is a goofier movie than Rocky 3 and you think it would be a bad movie because if you saw my Rocky 3 review, you know, while I enjoyed Rocky 3, it's one of the least memorable Rocky films in my opinion. Well... It's weird because Rocky IV 
is technically the dumber film. Yet Rocky Four is a lot more memorable, and there's much more of a charm to it because of how much it embraces the cheese. And it's weird because you have a very goofy story, but you have an emotional counterbalance at the same time. Rocky loses one of his closest friends, Apollo Reed, who gets killed in the match he's in. And Rocky goes on a path of revenge to take out Drago once and for all in the next round. As dark as that story sounds when mixed with, you know, the cheesy tone that the rest of the movie has, I mean, the emotional center of this movie still packs a punch because of the past history with the two characters and being a fan of Rocky since the original film. And so, even with the cheese, there's still a great story in there, even though the tone, some of the dialogue, and everything like that is a little bit messy. The soundtrack is clearly of the 80s. There's some great songs in there, like... I am a sucker for 80s music, so I can jam to songs like James Brown's Living in America and Survivor's Burning Heart and John Cafferty's Hearts on Fire. Those are all ridiculously fun songs. The, those songs do work in the film. It's a very fun, infectious soundtrack, even though it's a very cheesy one at best. I do enjoy Rocky IV, and I actually, it's crazy to believe this, because you'd think this would be a just a product of the 80s films because of the Cold War setting and everything like that. And you'd think, oh, this movie would not have any relevance in 2021. Well, along came a movie called Creed II. <laughs> and if you watch Rocky IV and Creed II back-to-back, -back, I'll dive more into this when I review Creed II, but... Creed 2 was so compelling and powerful of a movie that it actually improved Rocky 4 for me because Rocky 4 is pretty much the building blocks for Creed 2. And part of the reason why I enjoy Rocky 4 now than when I first saw the film, when I first saw the franchise a few years ago before I even had a YouTube channel, I love Rocky 4 more now than I ever did thanks to Creed 2, which helps elevate and improve some of the layers and dynamics of that film when it's elevated to a different level when the story continues in Creed 2. It's really crazy that they did that and I'll dive more into that when I review Creed 2. So Rocky 4 is an interesting film. There's a lot of dumb elements to this movie like I said and it's so laughable thinking about it but at the same time, you have a great story in the center of it. I do enjoy the Rocky Drago dynamic, even though it is very goofy seeing Sylvester Stallone at the height of his fame, where he's the most super jacked in movies between this and Over the Top and Rambo 3. And you got Dolph Lundgren, who's as equally jacked in this film, and he says the most over the top lines as possible, like, if he dies, who dies? And. I must break you. Like he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just so hilarious. You have a great story mixed with an over-the-top film. And I think this is one of the more rewatchable Rocky films, I must say. This is one where, yeah, the film is goofy, but it's still entertaining and I enjoy the story throughout. It does crack me up that even though when we're in the Russia scenes and it's set in the freezing cold and Rocky's running up mountains. It's funny, they never actually went to Russia. It's actually shot on a farm in Wyoming. <laughs> it's just so funny once you think about it. Oh man, Rocky IV is an experience. It really is an experience. It doesn't compete with the best of the Rocky movies or even the Creed films in that matter, but... Man, Rocky IV is still a fun time. It's definitely more memorable than Rocky III. If I had to choose between those goofy Rocky films, I'd rather watch Rocky IV over Rocky III any day of the week. I think Rocky IV has a more engaging story. It definitely, I think, embraces the cheese a little more and it has more charm to the story. And like I said... The material in Rocky IV is, I think, elevated now because of what Creed II did with the material. And that makes the movie all the more better for me. 
And that's something I highly, highly respect. The filmmakers and Stallone and everybody working on these movies for doing something like that. For taking the movie so cheesy and what could have easily been dated and just a product of the 80s. And making it a more tangible and accessible film, I think, for modern audiences, even with the 80s cheese. So that's something I highly, highly have to respect. So what am I going to give Rocky for? I'm going to give Rocky four a 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 76 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Rocky four. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm currently reviewing all the Rocky films on my channel. And I'll leave a link down in the description below for a playlist where you can check out all the other Rocky reviews I've done on this channel so far. I reviewed the first three Rocky films at the time of this video. I plan on reviewing the other Rocky films as well. I'm halfway through this franchise. And be on the lookout for my next review coming to the channel very, very soon with a review of Rocky V. If you've seen Rocky IV, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, I usually do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!